Hello everyone and welcome to Gill Stadium for today's matchup between the Sweeney Post and the... Oh, let me try that again. <coughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Gill Stadium for today's matchup between the Sweeney Post team and the Plymouth Post 66 Rangers. My name is Kyle Heavey from Manchester Public Television. It's the home opener for... Pl for Sweeney Post, and we're glad to be here along with me doing his first Sweeney Post game since his time playing out on the field is Mr. Michael Gonzalez. Michael, this is going to be a fun game right now for sure. This uh, Sweeney Post squad comes into the game with a one and one record playing consecutive three days in a row of baseball, and they are trying to get back on the winning track like they did on Monday. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good one, and I see Manny Castro warming up as pitcher. You know, the uh, star player for Memorial. So we've seen him a lot, and it's going to be exciting watching him uh, see, play some summer baseball. The, the difference this time is they go nine innings, and I love that you can play the 19-year-olds this year. So you get another chance for another year of competitive baseball. I love that. A lot of familiar faces and names on this lineup card for the Sweeney Post squad, including Jacob Plamondon coming back to his normal shortstop position. It'll be great to see him and Ethan May as well, and just to name a few of them. So as Manny gets ready to warm up, we'll see what this Plymouth squad is, who the Plymouth high school baseball team just lost in the state championship game on Saturday. So they got a lot of lot to prove right now with uh, being back on the diamond, trying to get over their big 5 nothing loss to the Hollis Brookline Cavaliers on Saturday. Yeah, quick turnover. That's that's Legion baseball, like you just mentioned. Sweeney Post having a you know their third game in, in quick games. Is it going to be a quick quick season? You you just bang out a lot of games, and it's right into it. Especially for you know Plymouth, who just got off that game. You know, I bet there's a lot of familiar faces from that state championship. It is a warm 73 and humid degrees right now with rain expected within the next hour. So we'll see how much we can get into this game. But we're glad to be here with you, and we'll see what we can do. And doing the catching duty, another player that we have not seen in a year, Mr. Ben Canny. Excited to see what he can do behind the dish. Yeah, it's good. You see these guys, they come together, you know, a year off out, off at the college, and you're coming back, and it's – uh. You know, you could see him talking to Manny, getting their sim their uh, signals straight. Wow. Some leadership, you know. Plymouth will start off with a lefty in Caden Dowes, the center fielder, and the wind going straight out towards the outfield. It's going to be a good game for people with power that can mash the ball out to center or to left field. So we'll see what happens. But with the first pitch here, an outside for ball one, and Caden is able to go up in the count. Now, one noticeable difference, I f is this a wooden bat situation? It is wooden bat. That is cool. What a great sound that is. We're looking forward to hearing the uh, the maple and the bass, you know, and the cork right now to see what happens here. As, uh, again, a 537 start here on the Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. And Manny falling behind in the count, 3-0 right now. Yeah, having a little trouble finding the strike zone there. Let's see if he can come back. And misses. We didn't even mention the umpires behind the plate, Mr. Adam Rosenmeck. And on the field, it's Gordy Shupman. And both of them were umpires in the contest on Saturday with, I believe it was Gordy doing the D1 on Saturday night with the Lundary and Pinkerton. And Adam was doing the D3 White Mountain. Big lead. White Mountain versus Mananoc. He's you know huge lead, good pick right there. You got to keep him honest because you know that Dawes wants to go for second here. Well, Henry Shaw, the the shortstop, is now the hitter here for the Rangers. He's off. Big jump. Ben Canny with an arm though, and he is in there safe. So one pitch, one stolen base, and we'll see what Caden will can do with the second pitch because. Third base is uh, looking pretty open for business if he decides that he wants to take off with that speed. I mean, <laughs> that would, I can tell you right now, one of the better jumps I've seen all season, including the high school ranks. Manny tries to go outside, misses. Shaw says to Caden to hold up. And going around the diamond, though, obviously we talked about Ben being beyond the kitchen. Uh, 
playing second base, Ryan Cunningham, who pitched a great game, six innings yesterday, but unfortunately a, uh, a defeat there. And wow, we'll see a if real we can play. Oh. Are we? oh, not able to make the play playing first base is none other than Alex Rivera. Yeah, usually, you know, he's all over that. He plays some center. He plays some shortstop. Um, you know, today's at first, a lot of ground there. But, you know, we all know that that's not an easy play here at Gill Stadium. Absolutely not. A lot of real estate out there. And now the count goes to 1-2. What a difference. You, you, you go metal bats, even in the college. So, like, these guys are used to college metal bats. And now you come here, you play a little hard ball with the wooden bats. It's kind of a throwback. Oh, popped up in the air. This should be Rivera able to eat, make this play, ranging over in front of Cunningham, and that will do it for out number one. Yeah, not going to get him that time, you know. That's a pretty uh, pretty easy can of corn. He'll catch that 100 out of 100 times. Well, Camden Stratton, the catcher, will be doing the batting now in the three spot, and we'll see what Camden is able to bring to the table here with now one out and still a runner at second base. First pitch popped up, and Rivera says, all right, I, I can do this all day, guys. Yeah, he just might, you know. He just Three might. pitches in a row that he's had to uh, try to make a play on, and now with two outs, things have gotten a little different here. Manny's gotten comfortable, and we'll see what number eight, Owen Cahoon, can do here. Now, you were at the state championship game. How did the Plymouth fare on that? Uh, they had a tough game, uh, 14 strikeouts for the Hollis Brookline pitcher and a 5 nothing defeat. Nice throw back, just Cunningham not able to get that into his mitt. So a little redemption time, you know, back in Manchester. You know, it's got to be a little, little discerning coming back to Manchester, but, you know, they're here to play ball. So That's true. It's a lot of drives up and down 93 for sure trying to get down to Manchester. Inside pitch goes for a ball. And Cahoon will be doing the third base duty here. Similar pants between the two teams, just uh, the Manchester squad with more of a gray with a red stripe. And now a little ground ball eaten up at third base. Can he throw it across the diamond in time? Not able to. Now coming around to score. And Plymouth takes a 1-0 lead on an error on the third base side. And... They will take that and take the lead. A tough spot to be in for Tyler Schrablowski. And unfortunately, smart base running by Caden Dows. Yeah, you could kind of see Kenny telling him, you know, next time, you know, just kind of make the safe play and don't throw over because it definitely led to a run there, Kyle. I would say that if he ate it, they'd have a chance of getting out of this. Oh, well, Trevin Stone will be the batter now with Plymouth with a one nothing lead and Cahoon at first base. Nice comeback pitch by Manny right there. That had some gas. Inside pitch, Canny not able to hold on to it. Gets away from him. no and idea now, where it is. Trying to figure it out. Now there's going to be a play eat at it, third. Travelowski <laughs> tells him not to do it. And now, unfortunately for Ben Canny, allows the runner to go from first to third. And now a duck on the pond right now. For Stone, who looks like he's got some size and strength to him. Yeah, he's imposing, and uh, that's just unfortunate. He had no clue where that ball was. Just popped out of his glove, went behind him, and he had no idea. Come back, pitched for a strike, and now it's a 1-2 count. I mean, it was at the point where Manny Castro had to come from pitcher to retrieve the ball. That's how lost the ball was. I've seen it. Nice pitch. Oh, in and now. One, two count with Manny trying to get out of this inning. This is a big opportunity to get out of this inning. Even though they let up that run, they if they he can get a knockout here, that'll really uh, excite the bench. And a little foul ball out this way. Oh, this is my season, I think. All gonna... right, we'll see. I know you've been trying for at <laughs> least uh, 18 games, I would say, we've done this year at least. through the, the high school baseball between Memorial and Central West. With the wooden bat, I feel like it's more optimum. 
There and it is. And there's strike three for Manny Castro, but Whew. not before Plymouth does get a run on the board. And now Sweeney Post will have to play from behind. We'll see what Ben Caney, Ryan Cunningham, and Jacob Plamondon can do as we head to the bottom of the first inning. Michael Gonzalez and Kylie Heavey for Manchester Public Television back to see what happens after this. Back here for the home opener of Legion Baseball, Sweeney Post versus the Plymouth Rangers. And we are seeing a lefty versus lefty matchup here with Ben Canny versus the tall left-handed pitcher, Logan Finkel for Plymouth. Yeah, lefty, lefty, you know, you get that catcher trying to make up for the uh, pass ball. It actually didn't hurt them. And a little pop fly, see if it, how far, well again, that wind is just pushing it out and easy to make that play out in left field and out number one, not really much, not, not much to worry about from Trevin Stone right there who was able to make that play after striking out to end the top part of the inning. And now we'll see what Ryan Cunningham can do playing the second base position. Yeah, quick out. Got to get a little more uh, pitch count, ideally. But you got to jump on a nice pitch if you can, too. You see it at all levels. If you know it's going to be a strike, you go for it. Oh, foul back. And now Cunningham got to protect with two strikes on him. Yeah, I mean, this could be a, quite the game for Finkel. He, he's just uh, a tall, imposing lefty, almost like Randy Johnson. Not as tall, but yeah, I still see what you're saying. But and that sidewind pitching style is really hard to pick the ball up. Well, that's why I was hoping that Ben would be able to do all right there, but unfortunately he just flew out to left field. And now trying to work both sides of the plate, but Cunningham doing a good job of really holding off. And now a 2-2 count. Finkel delivers. Ooh, and nice. does get the strikeout. Sure Two outs did. right there. Cunningham will go back to the bench, and Finkel will be happy to get his second out of the inning. And we'll see what Jacob Plamondon can do. Just paints the corner perfect with that side three-quarter style of pitching from outside in. You can't pick that ball up. That's a nice pitch right there. Well, let's see what Jacob can do here. He takes a high first pitch and yeah this is um this is the heart of the order you know you got Castro next this is uh good to see them coming back after uh you know a year off must be nice coming back you know you, you know you're coming back from college and you get to play ball playing ball you know Ooh, gets the call strike Jacob who's attending Riviera University plays baseball there as well so He's a very busy guy with uh, you know playing baseball for college and now here for the Legion. And now a little ground ball. Finkel misses it. Shortstop ranges over, gets it. Ooh. And in time for the out and able to get that. Well done right there by the Plymouth squad. Henry Shaw gets it over to John Flaherty for out number three. So that will do it for the first inning. We'll see what can happen here as we will head to the second inning. Plymouth with a one nothing lead. We'll have Noah Shaw, John Flaherty, and Brady Morris do up. Back with more after this. Manny Castro starts us off here for the top of the first inning with a strike to Noah Shaw. And a good fastball right there from Manny. We'll see if he can get himself back tied up in the Ks between the two pitchers and popped up over our heads. He might have had a chance on that, but it was a little bit above us, landing probably right on the roof behind us. This is a big inning for Manny here. He's up 0-2 here. You know, he got uh, – there he oh, is. Oh, strike there three. Go. Ball gets away from Ben Canny. Can the throw in time? It is not in time. And now a yeah. base runner again for Plymouth. Never fun when you strike a guy out and he gets by. It looks like Canny's having a little uh, – Little cobwebs he needs to shake off right now as he's had a couple pass balls. So Tough spots right there for sure. Yeah. Still goes down as a K. Still a K, but he's Still a K. I mean it's 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 a weird, unfortunate K, you yeah, know? It's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, nice job right there. Kinda weird you can mark it as a K, but it's not an out, you know? That's but now we'll see what John Flaherty, the first baseman, can do. He fouls this one back up over us. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, Shaw's looking to steal here. I've been kind of keeping an eye on him. He's got a pretty conservative lead here. Manny takes a peer over, a 1-1 one, one count now. Pitch goes a little too high as Rosin Mex says, nope, no good. Yeah, he's leaving it a little high, and uh, maybe this time he'll go because he's definitely going. Yeah, he's gone. I can and tell. And now Kenny fumbles it, uh, throw is a little high, and Cunningham was able to bring it down. But now a Plymouth player at second base again with no outs. Yeah, Shaw was kind of just like conservative. He was getting his uh, lead down, and on the fourth pitch, he, he knew he was going. He got a really good jump on that. It's a 3-1 count now, so we'll see. Manny decides to step off. Get a little sweaty palms going on. Humid air. Yeah, definitely uh, not not a dry air type day where the ball is going to fly well. And call yeah. the strike. <laughs> ben puts a tag on him, but uh, instead it's now a full count. Yeah, why not, I guess. But, you know, we knew it was a full count. He was, uh, you know – a suspect of creeping to the first baseline. Umpires don't like that. No, and they generally. And now a little oh. scor scorcher that gets past Plumond, and it gets past oh. the right fielder, or excuse me, the left fielder. Ian Gray's not able to handle that, and still on his horse. We'll see if they stop him or if they send him. They're gonna stop him, and just like that, Plymouth is able to go up two nothing on a single that will make him move on. Due to an error oh, yeah. and a tough spot to be in for Ian Grace, who well, that ball had some some movement on it and it kept going all the way to almost the fence. Well, I saw what happened. He was going into the field thinking he was going to have to fire home, and he just got – the ball just got under his glove. And when that happens on this turf, see you later. I mean, he could have probably taken home on that. Yeah, the coach told him to stop. He had the stop sign up it right in front of him. He had to. And now big man, Brady Morris. So a couple uh, couple errors leading to a couple runs here. You know, you can even go back to the Alex Rivera miss. That wasn't quite an error. But, you know, just a missed opportunity to get an out. And, you know, Plymouth is definitely uh, taking advantage of every mistake that Sweeney Post is making right now. Well, like to see this guy get a hold of one, huh? Morris down to the count, 0-2. Try to go outside, did not fall for it. Yeah, he's got some uh, some power in those legs, I bet. So we'll see what happens if he gets a hold of one. Well, Manny trying to get his second K, or actually third K. Fouls one back straight to the, the padding. Well, we've seen Manny come in some pressure situations and come through. This is a big time uh, spot right here, and Kenny has to be on the ball because he can't afford another pass ball here. Infield kind of in right now, just in case there's a play at the plate if they need to, and nice able pitch. to get Morse to go down by a strikeout, and able to get the first out of the inning, and we'll see the pitcher versus pitcher battle here right now. Logan Finkel in the number nine spot up to bat. Trying to help his squad score another run. Yeah, Logan Finkel, also a star football player on the Plymouth squad. So he does it all. He'll go right into Legion baseball, right into fall football. You know, these multi-sport athletes, they, they don't have much time off. Keeps himself in shape for sure. You for know. sure, yeah. Plymouth always running a great running scheme for sure up there. Head coach Chris Sanborn. Fouls off, heads to the scoreboard. Yeah, tries to find a little. There's a lot of real estate there and left. Grace, you know, playing standard depth, but, uh, you know, you find that line. Nice lines today, huh? Very nice. I am very impressed by the line work right now. Caden Bruby out in center field. And, uh, Whoa, what was that? The uh, change change up. Not <laughs> able to get that. And that was a slow, I like it. 
it's like whoa <laughs> you just weren't expecting that to no be that that slow nobody was finkel wasn't no one was ethan may got to be ready out there in right field for sure who had a great game the other night a 13-6 win on monday with manny castro and ethan may both getting two hits seven rbis combined between Ooh. the two guys when you do that pitch and then you throw that fastball it makes it look so much faster He's throwing some gas. You know, summertime heat, you know. Very good for pitching. Again, Plymouth with a 2 nothing lead. One out here in the top of the second inning. A little. Oh, this going to find spot. Got to get out. Range over nice and job. get the out. And not chancing that running is John Flaherty. And now it'll be the top of the order with two outs. And we'll see what Caden Dowes can do, who was able to get on with a walk last inning. And now. Two innings, two times up the bat, and pretty good. Yeah, you know, that seems to be uh, a good pace to be on. But um, good job by Manny settling down. If he, This is a big out. If he can get this, get out of this. They'll be biting, their, uh, biting themselves, wishing they took that home plate on that uh, error right there, I bet. Right. Outside. He's looking good. He's throwing very fast right now. Well, we've obviously got to see his senior year. It looked pretty good. Yeah, some some good games. Some t you know the wind tunnel here is not always helpful for the home teams. I would have given him all state honors to be honest, Manny oh. Castro. Fouled back for a strike. I was very impressed, especially at the end of the year, how Memorial came back and just looked really good, and he's the catalyst for it all. I mean, you you lose to your arch rival nemesis, and you come back and you you start to really figure things out as they did. They really did. They were the, they were the team to beat at the end of the year. That is such an interesting pitch he has now. I don't know if it's a knuckleball, but it's definitely about 20 miles an hour slower than the fastball. And it's close that you you know you're not expecting it. You, you got to be on, and now a two one count to Dows. And it does that. It really peps up that fastball, as you could hear the pop. In yeah, the glove right there. Candy's glove definitely had a uh, little bit of a nice uh, popcorn sound to it. Sounds of the game. Ooh. Tried to get it now. <laughs> a full count again to Dows. Even the Rangers bench was like, ooh. <laughs> Another full count, and we'll see as we do have some. Uh, we do have some action, yep. Ooh, oh, nice he's job. swinging a miss, and, and Castro one. was able to get out of the inning again with a strikeout, but not before another run comes around. And now we'll see what they can do with the Sweeney Post. Their bats, they need to get woken up as they went one, two, three in the first. We'll have Manny Castro, Alexis Rivera, and Ethan May do up here in the bottom of the second. Manchester Public Television's Legion Baseball coverage back with the bottom of the second after this. Pitcher versus pitcher battle to start us off here in the bottom of the second. Manny Castro versus Logan Finkel. And we are ready to see who will win this battle. As first pitch, Finkel wins that first pitch with a strike. Yeah, Manny Castro has got to be regarded as one of the top hitters in the state. Hitting fourth again. And sends one out to... Center field, large gap, but it's closing in. Morris not able to get it. The wind playing a factor right there. And Manny will stop at second base with a stand-up double on the second pitch of the at-bat. You know, Kyle, this is one of them games. Yeah, I know they, they're scheduled for nine, but if you're Sweeney Post, you want to catch up and catch up quick because this game is absolutely not going to go nine innings due to the weather, I think. Yeah, you can see the dark clouds coming in here as it is a good storm front. It looks like it might be raining already okay, in the some. western part of the city. And, uh, well, we'll see what Alexis Rivera can do, the first baseman today, who has got a heck of a bat as well. If he can catch that jet stream that we just saw uh, Manny hit as well, that could make a, a long double as well. That would put the tying run at... Second base, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and you can see that um, Morris is way back in right field. A lot of room there. If he were to kind of go with an outside pitch, he could definitely deposit one into right for a base hit. Not a good day to be a bird or a plane right now. But if you're a baseball for Sweeney Post, you'd love to take a ride on out to the fences. Or, or a dry piece of paper. Yeah, that, that's true, too. That would be a bummer because you know you're going to get wet. 
And a pop up in the air. See if this is a cause any trouble here. They're all ranging together. Nice and job. And able to make that catch is Flaherty and able to get the out. Woo! Smart Not play. easy. Smart play. That's the that's his ball all day, and he called him off, and he made the catch. And that you're right about that. That is not easy, Kyle. That is so hard to do. And as we saw, oh, hit the deck. What's that? I'm not sure what that was. I'm gonna go with fireworks. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, Summer fireworks. Outside pitch to Ethan May, who is playing at right field today. Great to see Ethan back. As, uh, again, kind of scary sounds. Maybe it was a backfired car. I'm not sure. I'm sure it was. The wind pushing the door open. This is, we're not. Oh, boy, here we go. Yeah, if Sweeney, <laughs> I mean, Sweeney's going to really step up the urgency. And swung oh. out to Morris. This it. should be dropping in. It will. Manny is on his horse. The throw is in. And actually, Manny will be stopped at third base. So runners will be at the corners with Ethan May at first and Manny Castro at second, or yeah, the other way around. Uh, Ethan at first and Manny at third, and with one out, runners at the corners. And we'll see what Ian Grace can do, who would love to replay that play out in left field over again, and now it's time for him to use his bat to be able to get something going. Yeah, absolutely. This is the chance he's looking for, and uh, – you got a duck on the pond. Look for a first and third situation. And again, you know, he put it right in right field. It made me look good as a color commentator. First pitch inside. Great to see Ethan back. He had a cast on his arm last year, was not able to play much. And to see what he can do with his bat when he is healthy is a great thing to see. As obviously, he's already got three hits on the season. And uh, inside, call the strike. Ian, not really proud of that. I had a chance to talk to Ian before the game about uh, the last game of the year versus Spalding. Michael, you remember this with Brett Bennington not able to make a pop fly. And Ian was able to tag out the runner, but the umpire did not see it and called him safe. It ended up being the lone run in the game. And yeah. uh, it's something that we still uh, are still not pleased about. As uh, Well, the, the evidence was that he wasn't out. He was out. So you uh, – you were right. You called it live, and uh, I doubted you a little bit, and then uh, you showed me the proof. And now. But, you know, it's how for an umpire to see everything. Oh, Ian goes down by way of the K, and now with two outs, we'll see what Caden Barubi, the center fielder, can do with his bat in the number eight spot with now runners still at the corners and – Winds and rain not too far away. Oh, yeah, any minute. You can see the, the jerseys and of everyone. Throw over, gets away, and now coming in will be Manny wow. Castro. All the way to Maple Street. <laughs> That'll be out of play. Flaherty tried to do a good stop of that, just not unable to. And now the tying run 180 feet away and a 2-1 to one game with Sweeney Post getting on the board. Well, Errors worked against Sweeney Post. Now it's working for them here. And yeah, Barubi played for Memorial last, uh, you know, last season. Um, you know, so he he's another turnover right at you know season ends. The next season starts. This is this is what ball players do though. But yeah, Sweeney, uh, I'd like to see this weather hold up because I like I have a feeling they could make a run at this. Pop fly out towards the bullpen, bounces into the bullpen. So. That'll be an easy ball to shag for sure. Yeah, that's one of those you just leave for later. Yep. You know it's there. A long strike one, though. <laughs> Look at the jersey in the wind. Yeah, I'll, I'll look, zoom in here on Logan Flaherty just to give you an idea of what the conditions look, are. It's, look it's, at Finkel's jersey. It is just like a flag. I mean, it, it, I'll show you the flag right there going now straight out from west to east. And now a 0-2 count and tries to get him chasing. It did not fall for it. Now for ball one. And Rosamek, the umpire, looks like he has hammer pants on. You know, just, uh, <laughs> you know, can't touch this. <laughs> it seems that way. We're cool up here, though. We're very nice. Yeah, it's nice up here. It's cozy, even. 2-2 <laughs> count now with two outs. Runner at second base. Wow, if they, they 
Lots of twos up on the scoreboard right now. And a little pop fly, just not able to come close to that. Now, if you pay the if you pay the five bucks to get in, do you get to keep the ball in the stands? Um, I, I feel think like you so. should. I feel yeah, like you I feel like you should. <laughs> a little quick changing of the batteries here. Not the back again. Not the pitcher catcher. Different battery. Different battery, yes. <laughs> Well, trying to figure out why it sounds so staticky on our end, but uh, either way, still a 2 2 count. Oh, oh, just, yeah, he got, yeah, you can't really argue that, Kyle. It was not a nice swing, but Caden yeah. Berube will go down, and Logan Finkel is able to keep a lead for Plymouth, two to one. We'll head to the top of the third inning. It'll be Shaw, Stratton, and Cahoon due up for the Plymouth Rangers, a two-one game. Michael Gonzalez and Kyle Heave from Manchester Public Television back with more after this. Back here for the top of the third inning and the rain has started to trickle down a little bit here. We're gonna see what we can do about getting this game in as much as we can. And Henry Shaw will be the batter. Shaw popped up to first base his last time up the bat. And now a little ground ball to Manny Castro, who was the pitcher before, now playing his normal third base position as Tyler Shrablowski and him have switched spots. And a nice 5-3 out number one right there. Yeah, a little swap out. You know, you pitch, I'll play third. You know, and I then pitch, I'll, you play third. Yeah, and I'll make the play. No problem. Good job. He's always solid over there at the hot corner. And I, I believe the goal is to get five innings in to make this official, correct? That is correct. That's what we're aiming for. And pop up, see if Candy can find this. This, uh, oh. oh, the wind again playing a huge factor. And Ben is having one of the toughest games of his career here so far in this first three innings. Yeah, you know, he'll shake it off, though. He looks like a gamer. But, yeah, that was uh, – no lack of effort there. I mean, that ball had some movement, too. Oh, it's absolutely did. It's like Hurricane uh, Gloria back in the 80s. Well, Stratton, who grounded out or popped out to first base his first time up to bat. Well, we'll see if he does it again here. No problem. Alexis says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got that. Get the right and guy around the there. horn, they'll go with it. The rain has started to fall here. I'll try to find something to... Yeah, there we go. I can show you through the tree. And it is coming down hard and fast right now. And we'll see what Owen Cahoon can do. I mean, as the more innings go on, the umps are more motivated to get this game in. And both teams, you know, you don't want to waste your time. You want to get an official game in. Strike right there. Cahoon, I'm not really – I didn't write down how he got on base his first time as he was able to, uh, to he, get a stolen base as well. He struck out and then got on from the pass ball. That was Noah Shaw that did that. Oh, okay. Cahoon was e the one who got the, uh, yeah, well, e it, it was a single. It was a single and then. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a, um, a late throw. Wow, that was another crazy pitch. Looks like uh, they're really experimenting with the uh, off-speed variety. Or the wind just, <laughs> the rain just made it slip out of his hand. That's possible as well. <laughs> this is turning into gorilla monsoon weather right now. Yeah, it is. Uh, talking to Ian, we we joked about how many times Central West had issues this year. Pop fly up in the air. Plamondon going out. We'll see who's got it. And Plamondon <laughs> able to get it as too much rain to the face for Caden Barubi, who had to duck away. And that will do it for the third out. We'll see what they do here with this uh, weather. It's starting to play a huge factor here. But a one, two, three inning for the Sweeney Post squad. And we'll head to the bottom of the third. We'll see if it's now or then. We'll be back with more after this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to a rain delay, not something that we're used to doing here for Manchester Public Television when we're commentating baseball, but the umpires have seen enough of this rainy conditions as we now will have Buzzle bring out the tarp and cover the the pitcher's mound here. And, Michael, this is a, an unorthodox situation that we're in. We don't know if this game's going to continue to be played or if we might be done here. I feel like I should go help him out there. You know, that thing could just take off. But, yeah, he's covering up the uh, the lone dirt on the field. 
here at Gill. This is a very rain-friendly stadium, and uh, I suspect we'll probably be about 20, 25 minutes or so. Well, we'll see as the radar does not look good, but Scott Buzzle, great job on your end to try Absolutely. to cover up this mound or this pitcher's mound and uh, keep things going. But, uh, yeah, we're going to take a break here from Gill Stadium. Plymouth coming in with a 2-1 to lead. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing what Caden Brewery, Tyler Shrablowski, and Ben Caney could do with their bats. But uh, we'll maybe be back, maybe be uh, done. Thank you all very much for watching in case this is it. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back for a doubleheader against Bedford on Saturday. Otherwise, as uh, we can only talk for so much before it really kind of we have nothing else to talk about. Oh, I got jokes. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, you, we, we'll – We'll just stop on that I'll, note. And I'll uh, save them for uh, open mic night yeah, at the Shaskeen. There we go. <laughs> thank you all very much for watching. This is a uh, broadcast for Manchester Public Television. Michael Gonzalez and Kyle Heavey hoping to be back, but time will tell with Mother Nature. But thank you all, and we'll see you again soon.